Hallelujah. We do barach ya for all things. That he grant unto us on this great shop, this great kids ve imats. That he will teach us in the disciplines of those things that are sound. And that will produce evidence in our lives that we are the children of Yisrael. The nation shall perceive and know that this is a people like none other people. This is a nation like no other nation. There's one thing we must understand how we produce the excellence. We must begin to prepare ourselves and we must, as Abraham would say, we must chanach. We must begin to train ourselves. And there's one thing that what training does, if one is training their physical proudness, then it begins, first of all, with the proper diet. One must feed one's body so that they can excel with great excellence in perfection. That their mind is consumed with the activity of that skill set. That they may produce the results. And each day they see the progressiveness of the training, of the activities. They can see the transformation of their physical being because there is something that's in their hearts that produce that kind of mind to cause them to go beyond their own limitations and their own ability. And so we as a nation of Israel, yeah, we must begin to train our minds to think. We must train our minds to think. And when one has the ability to think, one has the ability to draw from whatever resources that are available, and then they process that continuously through their mind that it produce a result, that there is a result, and they can see the achievement. For an example, I rose, I believe, Tuesday morning around 4.45, I was waiting on anticipating the lightness of the morning. And of course, when I began to labor, it was still dark. So I went to the greenhouse to check on things, to plant and some lettuce and things of that nature. And so when I got there, the mice had eaten all my lettuce seeds. And so I began to plant the onions in the onion bed. I'm giving us that example to let you know that there, there is no limitation on the ability to think. I will show us according to Torah and why we think the way we think and why our minds are not trained the way they should be uh, to think on the things that are above because we're missing an important thing. And so as I began to plant the onions, uh, the soil was wet. It was cold as well uh, and so uh, I tried different processes to see which one will produce uh, the greater result. And so I determined through different processes uh, that this would produce a greater result. I can move faster. I can accomplish what is necessary so that I can attend to other things. And that's why Yah wants to train he wants to chanach. He wants to train our minds to think. We are a generation of people that cannot think. And our minds have been so cascaded from Almighty Yahweh. Your shoe is not even on our minds. He's not even the concept of our minds at all. And the thing of it is we're not just legitimately honest with ourselves. We don't know how to be honest with myself. We don't know how to judge and to critique ourselves with honesty and forthrightness. And so in that we miss the most important and the most valuable things. So when one thinks, that is what keeps us alive. Whether we believe that or not. Because the Torah talks about think 
thinking thoughts and different aspects or different superlatives as to what that produce. And our minds do not, we don't even think because it doesn't take any thinking to punch buttons and things like that. In the days of our forefathers, they could take some of the most, uh, uh, some of things that were just nothing you could do with that. And yet they could take that, that the world rejected, and they could produce from that. We can't do that. The men do not know how to build or to create because their minds are not trained. There is no activity in their mind because they become drunk. But what? The cares of this world. I want to teach on that tonight. How we must train our laba, our minds. We must train our lev to think, to think, to think. I want to begin here in the writings. And when we don't think, we are not reminded of those things that are most valuable. We don't think on the Torah of Yah. We have not trained our minds to think on the Torah of Yah. So he is not a part of our processing of any matter. We don't process anything through the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because our minds on folly and frivolity... And such damnable foolishness uh, that it doesn't produce anything a substance. When a man has life, when he thinks on the things that uh, were ordained in the heavens, uh, you will see something about that man you don't see about other men. He's different. He doesn't look like them. He doesn't act like them. But the profound utterance of Baruch, here in First Baruch, and I want to start there for a reason. He says this to Yah's people, that we are reminded of the excellence of our Abad, what he has done, and what will proceed from us if we think on him. And so Baruch says to Yisrael, he uses this statement, uh, he says, we shall praise, uh, we shall esteem, we shall exalt him, uh, we shall uh, lift up me. Yah is commanding that where? He says, in the land of your captivity, in the land of your shabi, in the land of your bondage where your minds are so corrupt and distant from Yah, you can't even think on him. He's not in our thoughts. He's not in our minds. He's not, he has no significance of importance. And we are a nation that is in a land of Shabi. Not only are we in a bondage, and it's not a physical bondage, it is the bondage of the mind. It is how the world has captivated you that we don't give a damn when it comes to Yah. He is a distant thought that is so far, uh, it makes no difference because you know his name, it means nothing. I had a letter from this woman this week. It is amazing how women want to always tell a man. This was a statement I certainly enjoy. I love this website. But there are some things that you need to rectify. Of course, when I hear from women like that, my initial reaction is to chew them to pieces. And I mean that. I won't waste my time with women like that. I won't even try to correct them because it is futile. They have not trained their minds by the discipline of Torah. And what a nation is bound to shall be in captivity, whether it's the bondage of one's shackles, whether it's the bondage of one's mind that you can't get free from those things. We can't get free from our lying and our corruption and our vile ways. We can't get free from that. He said, in the land of your captivity, when your mind, your nephesh, your being is so captivated, whereby he says, uh, he says, I want you to think. I want you to, um, uh, there, there, there are different dimensions of the word think. I want you to, um, uh, I want you to call upon I want my name to be of great essence of value. And you call upon my name with a mighty voice. I want you to think. What? On my name. 
I want you to honor my name. I want you to cry out in my name. I want you to sing in my name. We don't think on the name of Yah. That name is not even a part of our activity, of our training. And if you do not train, you do not say, in order to be a soldier, they train us. They train us how to run. They trained us how to uh, take care of our physical being. And above all, they fed us right. We were young men that had not had a discipline in our eating and the dietary law. We didn't have one. You grew up poor like me. You ate what you got. And they trained us. They began the first day of basic training. They changed all of our dietary plans. I had never had a steak in all my life. I've never eaten a steak. And they're feeding me steak. They're feeding me omelets. I've never had that. And I saw my body in three or four days transform. I put on weight. And then I saw within two weeks a whole transformation of my physical being because it was a training. And the more I trained, my mind became adapted to that. And there was a great delight. When they said, we're going to run five miles, I'm ready. I want you to do a hundred sit-ups, let's do them. And we have not trained our minds. We're in the line of captivity. We're under every kind of bondage there is. We're bound by our corruption, but we don't think on his name. He says, whenever, wherever you are in the land of yours shall be the captivity of one's being, of one's mind, one's nephesh, one whole as a person. He said, I want you to, um, I want you to think. I want you to think on my name, Hashem, the name of our father. It's almost like a child in the wilderness of a dark uh, uh, place that is so bleak. He thinks about his father and the strength uh, and the beauty of his father. We don't think. About the strength of our father and the beauty of our father. Once you began to think on things like that, you began to create the image in your mind. And you began to see the picture clearly. We can think of every kind of vile thing, every kind of lustful thing, every kind of wicked thing. When it comes to the pure things of God, we can't think on those things. That's the reason why. Because there's something missing out of us. And I will show you in scripture, all right? I will show us in the key thing. Yoshua makes a profound statement here in Matitiya. And we'll go about in our lifestyle, we defy this. He says in Matthew, Matitiya, chapter 5, verse 17. He says unto us, I want you to understand what I am saying. He says, think not. And he used the words bazaar. Bazaar, don't have this day. Don't despise. You never thought like that where there's something you despise? You had disdain for? You didn't like that? So Yoshua says unto us, uh, it is vitally important that we do not have disdain or contempt. Think not that I am come to machar, to destroy. I did not come to blot out. I did not come to exterminate, obliterate. He said, think not. And our minds don't think on the commandments uh, and the beauty of Torah. That's why we are so easily consumed in sin uh, and every kind of corruption. Uh, our minds are not given over unto that because we don't think on uh, the Torah. We think on folly and foolishness. I would have loved to have a man like me to train me when I was a young man coming up in the ways of Yah. That these young ones and you will be more. I, I tell little Seri, I said, you will, you will be smarter than me. I'm not a smart man. You will speak language. You will do things that I could. I will not and do not have the ability to do. But this, I know what this says. Because I think on this. And I live this. And it's real to me. So he says, Baza, don't think. 
Don't have this disdain. Think not that I've come to uh, Macha, to blot out, to exterminate, to obliterate, to destroy, to wipe out any balance of any knowledge of the Torah, he says, or the prophets, the Naviim. Don't think that I've came to destroy the prophets, the Torah, the writing of the wise men. He says, I have not hired, I have not come that is not my mission, that is not my command from the Father. He says, I have not come for what? To destroy, to destroy what? But to fulfill. I come to Malay, I come to make sure this is the power of Yahshua in our lives. He consecrate the Torah. As the old folks would say, although I don't use this expression, quote, he came to sanctify the Torah in us, unquote. As they were saying in the old church houses, uh, as a sanctified, filled with the Ruach of Yah. That's what he came to do to Malay, to concentrate that, to set it as a standard of our training. You look at the Torah, you read the concepts of the Torah and the mandate of Torah, that it begins to build your mind. You become strong. That's why there is not a strong people. It is a fledgling weak people today. Because what? Can I ask you all a question? If anyone's going to pursue any kind of physical activities to train as anything, it takes a persistence. It takes a sincere heart. It takes effort and energy. You're not going to get it by just laying back. You've got to give up something. We're not willing to give up our sins and our corruption. We frankly don't give a damn. It is the truth. You cannot become a warrior without training. You train your mind. And when you train your mind, it develops the physicality of a man. He becomes stronger. He becomes a bona fide. You can be a warrior crying and pouting uh, and always got an excuse uh, nah worry he denies everything so he did not come to destroy he come to Malay Malay he come he came to consecrate the Torah in our minds when something is pure in our minds we think on it sure it is we think on those things when they appear, they're real. When there's an activity in our mind that has value, we retain it. Yah has no value to his people. He has no value. So we don't give him thought. We give sin thought. Lies and corruption. He did not come to destroy the Torah because he would have destroyed his fellowship. He tells us, I came not to destroy I did not come to blot out, to obliterate, to mecha. He said, the Torah, the prophets, I have not come to destroy, but to malay, to make sure that all things are complete according to my testimony. And verse 18, for truly I say to you, this is a statement, and the word of Yah is established. It's one thing that we can, we can settle in our hearts. That the Torah of Yah is always settled in the heavens. It's settled. He says, I say to you truly, until the heavens, the Shemayim, the current Shemayim, and the Olam pass away, he says, not one yud, one jot. That one small thing, one yud, or, or neither either any nakuda, one teru. Shall in no wise pass from the Torah of Yah until it be male, until it be fulfilled. The witness of Yahshua must accomplish what, what's in the mind of Yah. Now we talked about the thoughts of Yah, they're more than any psalm could value. And if one that made us, he puts his thoughts in our minds, you think it doesn't produce life and riches? 
Our minds are so corrupt and wicked. We are vile and sensitive people unto Yah. But yet we all think, you can, I know his name, it doesn't mean a damn thing. The demons of hell know his name. And when they hear the name, they tremble. We don't tremble at the name of Yah. We don't honor the name of Yah. We boast because we think we know it. Now when you know the name of Yah, it is that you Yada. You have experienced him. It's like a wife experiencing her husband. Or the husband experiencing the wife. You don't yield. We know of the concept of that. When a child knew that dad is in the house. Can't get crazy boy. Because you knew that he was the one that will resolve all things. And he did not spare the rod. So we have been trained on lies and corruption. And it's a sad thing we retain that. We love it. We retain it here. So we haven't trained our mind to change. We haven't. When someone began to train physically, don't you see a change in them? The countenance? They look younger. They look refreshed. And so when they began the physical activities, it changed something here. And you see it. That's a fact. You can tell those that don't train to do any activity to exert, to challenge themselves, to cause the blood. Our minds need bloods. And we're so magnificently created. It's amazing, isn't it? That the blood up here is not blood down here. The blood up here is different than the blood down here. Because we get stuff down here, we get all kinds of uh, contaminations. But the blood here is different than the blood in your body, the rest of your body. Yes, I shut that off of everything. The leba, the mind, the lead. That's a fact. That's a fact. And so we began to train our minds in the love of truth and the love of fulfilling male that the Torah sets us apart, make us different. Our Zakim better mean in the prayer. So gula, a peculiar, a difference. And so you walk different. You look different. And people ponder and they wonder, who is that man? What a beautiful woman. And because you dress like a sleazy slut, a little effeminate boy, mm-mm, dress like a man. Dress in the garment of Yahshua, Hamashiach. Well, I'll press on a little farther, Zakim. But it means says, here is a directive from your shul to the shulishim, the apostles, the messengers of Yah. And your shul says, also in the book of Meditha, Yah, Matthew 10, 33. He makes a profound statement here. Everything he says is profound. It is esoteric. It's beyond our ability to, to conceive it. And rationalize it. You don't get understanding that way. This is by the Ruach of Yah. It must come through the Ruach. So that's why we don't have fear of Yah. We continue in our ways. But Yoshua said, Whosoever, he says that shall kahash, those that deny me, those that deceive themselves and they grow so wickedly and so irritated at me. He said, those that deny me before men, this is a fact. Our lifestyles must represent the command of Torah. He said, I will also deny that person before my Abba. We don't think that Yahshua is that way. We don't think that he is going to kill. We don't think that because the Baptist whole house has taught us a lie. And your religious vile principles uh, have taught you lies. He said, if you deny me, if your lifestyle uh, is not worth a dime, you live superficially, uh, you live in falsehood, uh, and you say you know me, uh, and you represent my kingdom, uh, I will say to my Abba, damn that wicked one into hell. Uh, he won't talk like that. You don't know him. He is written by the, uh, by the prophets. He's the better sheet of Yah. He's the right sheet of Yah. He's the beginning of all things. He means what he says. 
He says, I'm going to deny them before my Abba, which is in the Shemaim. And then he uses the words, Anna. he says, think, don't even say it. You know, that's how we talk before we even think of what we're going to say. We just start talking. We've been trained to do that. We have been trained to aman, to speak, to utter, to voice our opinions uh, before we hear. It is good thing about a wise man or a wise woman, they hear the counsel. You rebuke a wise man, uh, a wise woman, they love you. Uh, you rebuke a fool, you get yourself a blot. A foolish man or woman despise uh, the muzah, the instructions uh, that correct them, uh, that they may represent the royal kingdom uh, of Almighty Yahweh. We don't want that. Uh, we despise that. Uh, and we got this self-impregnated, we think it's dignity, but it's a stupid pride, uh, and it produces nothing at all. It doesn't make us beautiful. It doesn't make the daughters beautiful. And it doesn't make the men charming as that weed, he was a beautiful little thing. The Torah used the word tiferah. He was so beautifully handsome. He was such a handsome boy. As one would say, he's a good looking boy. He's a handsome lad. He was pretty. He was so pretty and handsome. So charming. That's what he was. Hallelujah. That's why Yah's hand was upon him. They wanted a king that stood above everyone. Y'all say, that's the one, that's your king. And because of the sin of Bathsheba, he did that because that was the sin of the people. They were full of idolatry, ninda, they were filthy. He has always given kings after the hearts of the people. You tell me Yisra'ya was not corrupt. He raised up a son that built the house. Shalomu did he. And look at the vileness of them. When the judge, the shafti, would get them right, as soon as they died, they went back to ways that were more corrupt. I would say to the people that once lived with us, have once congregated, I say, your sons and your daughters are going to be worse than you all. Now look at their sons and daughters and tell me they're not worse. Look at them. From everything from homosexuality to bull daggerism. To every kind of all thing there is, uh, as the mommy is, uh, the daughters are going to be that way. That's a fact. And they're training their sons to be little effeminate boys. I don't take nothing back because I love Yisrael. We must train our children up in the way that they must go. When they get older, they won't turn. That's a fact. In all of my ignorance, I've never turned back on you Never tried to get over in my sins, never try to do things and think that I won't get caught. Never, never, never. That's why I can say with all honesty, I've never lied to my wife. I've never had to. Never had to lie about money, other women. Never did that. 38 years, never lied to her. Never in all of my life. Never had to. I didn't have to. I didn't have to lie to her. Yah has never lied to us. By his immutability, he cannot lie. Now see, that's love. Well, you don't say you love me, baby. You don't say you love me. No, that's love. Now that's love. No, 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 no. That's love. You learn the silly thing, what they call love. Say, I love you, love you. No, 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 that's love. How about that? He says, Amma, don't even think not that I've come to send shalom upon there. See, our minds, uh, we think that well, well, I, 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 I pray for my mom, I pray for my daddy, and, and yeah, gonna, he, he's going to bless him. No, he said, think not. He uses the words, lo. There is, when Yah says not, no, there is no possibility. He said, think not that I've come to send shalom upon the earth. I came not. To send shalom. But I came to send the head up. The sword of death. His word is a sharp two-edged sword. It's powerful. That's why we don't love him. And we don't love his Torah. Because it cuts to the depths of our wicked hearts. And shows us how valid he is. And how invalid we are. We are nothing. You're going to die. 
you're young and you're beautiful, you're pretty, you're attractive, you're handsome and strong, you're going to die, all of us. You're going to die. And the skin worms, the maggots are going to eat you. And nobody will remember you. Nobody. You think your mother's going to stop living because you're dead? We're silly people. For him I live and move. And I have my substance, my life is in Yeshua. He did not come to send shalom, that's a lie, but a sword. He said, I've come to set a man, he said, he used the words uh, variance. Uh, but Abraham would say, bad, sir. It's like he's a bad boy. I came to set separation, set division, to bring anxiety, to cause them to be separated, set apart. But I came, I came to set a man at variance with who? His avat, with his father. And at Bath, a daughter against her mother. Who oh, are Darshida and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law? That's what I came to do. Well, one denies the power of my will and my instruction. Well, we don't train our minds. See, we don't train our minds to understand that. Uh, and so we'll see things like, well, uh, I'm just going to pray. I'm not praying for nothing. I pray the will of Yah be done. The folks call me, Ray, I pray for my son, he's on drugs. And, Whoa. I say, well, why don't you pray this? Y'all kill him and just save him. Well, well I don't want to pray that. No, 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 pray that. Well, well, what if I pray that? I'm not praying for your wicked son, your whore's daughter. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do that. You know, we don't even know how to pray for ourselves. We're trying to pray for someone. Get real. Let's get real. Let's get genuine. Ask go pray for your daughter. You don't even get on your knees and pray. We are great pretenders, are we not? We train our minds to believe lies. We train our minds to lie to us. We train our minds to be deceptive and to deceive us. We train our minds to be, uh, to, to be as uh, wicked and callous uh, as I am. We don't want to deal with what he says. He said, I came to set that. Why would I pray against that? Why? Would I pray against that? Tell me. He said he came to set variance between a father and his son, and a mother and a daughter, and the mother against her daughter, and the daughter against her mother. Why would I pray y'all change that? Mama, you don't give a damn about y'all. Daddy, he doesn't even consider y'all, and your daughter's a floozy whore. She doesn't care. So why am I going to pray y'all change that? I pray nothing. I pray y'all, your will be done. I say, I prayed that with folks too. Y'all. It's your will, save him and kill him. Take him on out of there because he's just going to continue to walk like that. Oh, Ray, I don't, don't pray like that. Uh, why you don't want me to pray like that? Y'all should sure pray, y'all, if it's your will, de deliver me. If it pleases you, don't let me taste this. Did he consider, nah, I'm ready. Precious in the sight of y'all is the death of his people. Why, why wouldn't you want your son, he's a drug head all his life, 50 years old, still doing drugs. You got to save him up, clean him up, and kill him up. We don't think like that because we, you know why we don't think like that? We have trained our minds not to trust you. We trust the devil. We trust Walmart. I said to a woman today, I don't ever go to those checkout things, but there were so many people this morning, and I wanted to get back. So I brisked through one of those counters where you check yourself. I don't do that. I said, the Waltons are rich bastards. They're greedy dogs. They're pigs. They don't even care about their employees. And so I was, I was, I was somewhat irritable. Uh, woman over me, well, you do that, do that. I said, woman, why don't you just do it, really? And so I said to her, I said, you know, it's, it's, it's appalling how greedy the Waltons are. She was so ignorant, she did not realize that this is a process to eliminate your job, honey. They're, they don't need you. And so I began to speak on the Waltons, how greedy, the doggish nature of them. And she says to me, I, I don't understand what you're saying. I said, you don't understand what I'm saying? You must understand, 20 years ago I was going to that Sam's. 
There was a man, his name was Carl. He was a beautiful man, decent man. He was the manager. And every time I would go in there, I don't care, Carl, when he saw me, he would come to my aid. And he would stop everything and talk. And we'd go out in the parking lot, we would talk. I would have to get away from him. And he said to me, he says, Riach, I will give you an acre of beautiful land in the mountains. Well, I wanted to get the land because it was going to be a retreat for married couples. They go to the mountains, a beautiful place. They can trout fish. He said, you will have a panorama, panorama view, everything. He liked me that much. You assist me on this building, and I'll do it. Well, he fell one day and got hurt. He said to me, he said to me, after some time, some years, he said, that is the most evil place and the people, they don't care about nobody. They are evil. He said, I am having to suit them in order for them to even pay my medical bill. And so this woman said, I don't care what nobody do as long as I, uh, uh, it pays my bill. I want to look at and say, Heifer, can I ask you a question? If I paid you $3,000 a week and I'm a pimp player daddy at a drug dealer, will you work for me? I didn't even respond to the crazy Jezebel, but I did leave a parting shot. When I was leaving, I said to her, I said, to her, make sure you keep paying those bills. She didn't know how to respond. See, most women would get smart. I said, make sure you keep paying those bills. How about that? She was so ignorant, it's pathetic. Her mind has been trained to, to love paying her bills. To become an indentured slave in captivity. Just got enough. Live among the heathens like dogs that don't even care. We are an ignorant people. And we think we're bright and smart. And we're not bright and smart. We don't even think on Yahweh. We, these things we don't think on. When there are variants, that's right, Ima. We don't even think on things like that. We don't think, well, what does the Torah say? There's variance between my, uh, my, my siblings. Your said it would be variance there. It would be bad. And that's how you say it in the Hebrew tongue. Bad. B-A-D bad. Man, I live in a bad household. You do. And we don't want to comply and to be complicit with what your sure came to establish and not destroy. We want to defile that. Because we have not trained our minds uh, to consider him, uh, to even love him, uh, to even think on the beauty of what your shoes said. We don't think of that. We say, well, well, well. I was talking to one. I wanted to teach on the anger of Yah tonight. I was talking to one one day, and a person said to me, well, I, I don't think it's right to get mad. I got upset when the person said that. And, of course, I went to him like, you know, white on rice to the person, to that individual. I said, you're silly and you're ignorant. And opened up the book and just showed him how angry, how mad Yah is. He's angry with the wicked, the rich, those that deny him every day. He's angry with them. He's angry. His us, his indignation, his nostrils blow like a bull. You got to do something to make someone that angry. He's mad at this wicked world, how it has destroyed, uh, pillaged, and robbed, and raped this earth. Uh, he's going to destroy them all. That destroys the earth. You don't destroy what he has created. Uh, he's going to destroy them all. He's coming like a mad man. Don't forget, he is the man of war. That's what Yeremiah says. He is a man of war. Moving quickly, Zokin Yeremiah would say. I'm going to set this variance with mother and daughters and all that. And then he says in Metitia 1036, a man's, sir, his adversaries, his enemies, his foe, the ones that oppress him. No one oppress you like mom and daddy and brothers and sisters shall be of his own house. I would tell my mother, why you worry about those pigs? They don't care about you. Why you worry about them, old woman? You can't make them change. I wish they all were like you. I said, they're not like me. I said, you sit here and worry about them. Go ahead. And a man's oppressor. 
And a man's foe shall be of his own house. Those that oppress him. Those that make him deny Yah and will lie for that enemy of Yah. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. I had to meet my natural brother. I don't hide anything. My natural brother. By the biological process. And so he met me at Sands because uh, he's a tax preparer. And he does an excellent job. He really does. And so when I saw him, it was no embracing. It's how you doing, man. Boom. How long was that? Was that that 30 seconds with him? Maybe it wasn't. Oh, maybe 15 seconds. I'm gone. I have time for him. Because I told him one day, damn your wicked God. He calls himself a Muslim. I talk that way. I said, your God is a dog. How about that? The Muslim God. Damn your God. I'm not going to strengthen that and embrace that. You can. I will not. How about that? Hallelujah. So my foes, my son, shall be of my own household. And when we began to develop this mind, and the only way you're going to develop that mind that was in Yoshua Hamashiach, let the same mind, as Shaul writes unto the gathering of Philippi, the Philippi, uh, uh, there he says to them, let the same mind that was in Yoshua HaMashiach be in you. And so in the midst of the great battles and trials, Yoshua said, nevertheless, not my will be done, not my hafiz, not my pleasure, but the will of the Father be done. Is that in our lives? We don't want the will of the Father. I've always said this, and I still believe this to this day, as we get older, and we are getting older, believe me, that if I had to sleep in a brush arbor, nothing, she would be right there with me, sleeping right beside me. I know she would. And she would not complain. And that's a fact. That's a fact. Whoever I had to lay my head, she's going to lay her head with me. Fact of the matter, I build her brush arbor. I build a house. Pine trees. And I, the roof won't leak either. The generation doesn't want to come under the wings of Yah because we don't care about him. And yet we say, oh, I love Yah. You don't, you don't even know what love is. It's more than just a four-letter word. I love. That's not love. In fact, hallelujah. Some great insight here in 1 Peter, in 1 Kepha 4 and 12. He tells us not to have maza, don't have disdain. He says, beloved, think it not strange. Don't say why this happened to me. So he uses the words baza. He said, don't get upset, don't have disdain or contempt for the great agony of trials that you will be afflicted by. Because this is my process of perfection and purging and cleansing. He said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is the trial you as though some strange thing happened to you. You hear folks say, well, I don't know why this happened to me. Because we haven't trained our minds. When a mind is running a race, I mean, you have seen pictures I have of marathons. Where one uh, is so severely cramping, uh, and yet they crawl to the finish line. Uh, and yet they're esteemed and exalted as though they're heroes. Uh, 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 you know that's a fact. There are those that have had broken limbs. Uh, that there was, uh, who was that? Was it Bob McAdoo, the, the Knicks game where he lived back on the basketball court? Uh, it was a McAdoo, Willis Reed. Uh, and he, uh, that was in the 60s. And he, he come back out like that boy, and he, and he played the game, and they won So we train our bodies right. We train our minds right. Even the strongest assault, even the physical abrasion and activities will not make us turn away from Yah. It takes nothing for us to turn away from Yah. Hell, the television make us turn away from the computer all day. Or your cell phone, you tick tack tack and text in everyone. You must well love me. Might as well. 
No man's going to tell you the truth like this. Hallelujah. Well, we're the Hebrews. You're nothing but a liar. Full of pretense. It's amazing that he's a Hebrew, but he changed his name to Yakahanan Yakob. He calls upon one of the most damnable lies in the, in the earth, Jesus Christ, isn't it? And yet they call themselves Hebrews. But yet they change their names, don't they? They're liars. Listen to this quickly. He says, you got to understand in verse 13, but rejoice. We don't know how to rejoice. When one rejoices, there is an exuding of exhilaration. One extinct, one gets a great, I mean, it's, it, 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 as they were saying the days, quote, it blows the mind, unquote. There's such a rena, as that we would say, a celebration that it rings in the ears of those that are near. And you're sure this is what Kepha, the man that denied him, he said, but rejoice in so much as you are partakers of your sure how much she is suffering. We suffer for him, we will reign with him. Our minds are not trained to suffer. Anyone that's uh, the proudness or their activities or athletics, uh, you must train yourself. You got to train yourself hard. You can't run a marathon by running a, a mile a day. And the process you may begin with a mile and you work it up to two miles and three, five, six, seven, eight, ten. So you can run, run the whole 27 plus miles, 27 and a half miles. You cannot get the spiritual mind until you began to submit yourself unto all things. Call everything that is written in the Torah. Well, how do I make the offerings? You make them by one simple way, by the words of Todah. And Todah is an appreciation, not just a verbal one, but is expressed in your walk. For example, the man walks in the house. Mama got fried chicken. That's all right by me. Sweet potato pie. Pinto beans and dumplings. Even the fragrance calls him to say, Mama, my girl, what is that you have for me? Ah, that smells good. It changes the sensor, sensory factors. It changes the way he looks, the way he, his expression. That's a fact. It's a fact. Man trained himself at the end of a hard day. He looks for the great fellowship of rejoicing. We haven't trained ourselves. You've got to train yourself in this. I'll show you what we haven't. I'm going to get to that before finishing that. i got 30 minutes. Hallelujah. We should not think it's some strange thing. We'll partake of his suffering. Why? That when his honor shall be revealed, you may be glad with exceedingly joy. When are you all waiting for that honor to be revealed and the uh, by and by? It's now. You see the great refreshness, the refreshing among Yisrael, the gladness of heart, the beauty of fellowship one with the other. That is none of y'all. It's one thing we have not learned how to do. First of all, we don't give a damn. We can say what we want to. We don't know how to love y'all. Because when you love me right, I don't know how you love Yah. It is difficult for us to love each other. We hate each other. We despise each other. We go out there with the faggots and the butch bull daggers. And old grandmammy and mammy can be a dirty old wicked thing. You love to talk with it, sing with it, but you can't talk to me. Why is that, man? We love that. We don't give a damn about Israel. The apple, the heart of Yah. We don't give a damn. We don't love his people. We don't give a damn. Love is greater than I love you. I'm glad you're all quiet. You daughters learn to be quiet. We don't give a damn. We don't care. We don't love. Nobody can tell you you don't know how to love. You will get raunchy. You can't tell me I don't love. I'm telling you, you fool. You don't know how to love. You don't. 
You have something that is melancholy and synthesized, and it's so false that we don't know how to love because our minds have not been trained to love. We've been trained to be selfish and uncaring, but we have not been trained to think on love. The greatest commandments he give us to love him with all love our ya about with all of our love our Laba and all of our nephews with our being. And then he says, I show you commandment like that one. You love me. So you can't tell me you love Yah. Oh, I love Yah. You can't tell me I just told you, Jezebel. When you love Yah, you will see that reflected in how you love me, how you care for me. You can talk that talk, but it means nothing. It means nothing. Yah's going to blast it to hell. He's going to blast it open. Won't be long. That's a fact. So don't tell me you're not in love. Don't tell me you care. Because we don't care. We have to be reminded of that word of it. Love your neighbor. You don't have to love somebody. You got to love somebody. We don't know how to do that. That's why we can't love him. We don't love to hear him talk to us. Because we don't think what I'm saying is in the book. But what I'm saying is written in the book. It's not something that I prescribe, but we want people to prophesy smooth things. Tell this Jezebel she's sweet. She's not she sweet. Tell this old effeminate man that he's a strong. He's not strong. He's an effeminate boy. I won't tell him that. Go up like a man. Stand up, as Yah says uh, unto Yahushua. Get up off your face. Uh, quit praying for them devils. Stand up like a man. That's what we need men to stand up. You pull out the sword. The sword when they need to and cut your head off. Mm -hmm. Prophets are smooth things. Tell me I'm sweet. You're not sweet, my friend. You're not nice. You're not kind. You're not loving. You're not that way. I'm not going to lie to you. You're mean. You're nasty. You're not precious at all. You act like a bull. The woman should act like a bull. I'm a bull. I'm a man. I don't have no harem of cows like the cows we on the other side. That big bull, he lets you know I'm a bull. I'm a man. I'm the baddest thing out here. We're kicking in at 2,600 pounds. You are the baddest boy. I'll run from you. But I'll tell you what I call shipment and say, knock him out. He'll knock him out. Plum! And I have steaks, bull steaks, Angus, bull steak. You walk in that field among them, cows and the heifers. He said, you don't do that. You just don't come out here like that. Don't try me. I'm a man of a man. 2,000? He's every bit 2,600 pounds. Maybe a little lean now, but summertime, every bit 2,600 pounds. 2, That's a man, isn't it? A big man. Hallelujah. Let me move quickly. Kepha says, uh, we are partakers of the suffering, Yeshua. He says, if you be reproached, ostracized, and there's disdain for the name of Hamashiach, he uses the word Esha and Oshia. Happy. You're rich. You are rich. You are rich. Happy are you for the Ruach of Chabud's uh, honor? Of Almighty Yahweh rest upon you, uh, and on that part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is exalted, he is esteemed, he's lifted above all things. That's the way your should should be, that's the way Yah should be. That's why we should train our minds to think on him. We should train our minds, uh, we feed our bodies. Any athlete must feed his body. You got to. That's fact. I've been around a while. He must feed his body. You cannot be strong and lift five, six, seven hundred pounds without eating the proper proteins and having the carbohydrates to when you need that thrust, you got it. You cannot do it. So the first thing you must feed your body first. Because if you don't feed your body, your body will not grow to resist the poundage or the pressure. And then when you feed your body, you begin to feed your mind. And your mind will say, I can do it, I can do it. And all of a sudden, even the fear of not doing it will make you do it. I've done it too many times. I've done it too many times. 
The fear. So if we don't train our bodies, uh, are we not the body of Yahshua HaMashiach? Are we not the dwelling place of the Ruach of Yah? Is not the Ruach royal? Is it all broken down uh, and look like a shady, thrifty, uh, two-bit hustler? We shouldn't look that way. Our daughters shouldn't look that way. They should look glamorous uh, and beautiful uh, and their charm uh, accentuate them. We say, my, it shows she's my tenderness because I don't play with people. I say to them, this world is, I'm sick of it. I ain't lying. I don't play with them. She speaks differently. She speaks with my kindness. Well, you are not kind. Oh, stop it. You don't even know what kindness is. You silly man, you little image, you woman. So she is my tenderness, strength of my kindness. I don't want her to act like right mama let me act like this hallelujah just don't try to correct me now uh, 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 uh. don't do that hallelujah hear the word of y'all I want to show you why we can't think on the things of God if I show you in the book will you believe that if I show you more well, simple I want, to turn, I want you to turn to uh, Felicia Philippians Chapter 4. Yeshua Ud talks about if you have the essence of this substance, these are the things you can think on to train your mind, which will train your body, which will train your love for Yah. So he writes unto the Zachin, the Rishi, the elders, the old ones, the men, the women. When they call a mother, she's an Ima, she is also a Zachin, she's an older one. It talks about the extremely old, those among us in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, because our days are shallow. They are not long. The Torah calls them the Rishis, at the beginning of wisdom. It's in them where we, we get wisdom by their action, their ways, and, and their activities. Because they're always thinking upon Yah. Their minds are refreshed. Anytime daughters, your mind get away from Yah. Your mind's not going to be refreshed. So Shaul says here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, he says, be careful for nothing. Just make sure you guard your mind against the opposition of hell. Philippians 4 and 6. He said, be careful for nothing. He said, but in everything by bala, tefirah, prayer, and supplication. Now, everything we do, we must do with prayer. There must be supplication. There must be energy to our prayer. And the results of that with Torah, with Todah, with a great appreciation. I don't care if it's trials, battles, affliction, suffering. There must be an appreciation because we know that Yah is in control. We haven't trained our minds to believe that, that he is in control. And when we don't do that, we just don't trust him. We don't trust him. He says, let your request, your statement be made known Unto Yah. That's why you don't have to have repetition in prayer. Yah, I need help. You know I'm wicked, Yah, help me. You know if I talk to us the way I talk to me, I talk to me very brutal. I don't talk to him that way. I don't talk to him. I don't talk to the Achim. I don't talk to nobody the way I talk to them. Nobody. That's the truth. Sometimes I'm ashamed of what I call me. And they're not what we would call nice words. I'm very brutal with So ask me, you say something? I'm just talking to myself. We must let our request be known unto Yah. And then he says, and the covenant of Shalom and the Shalom of Yah, which pass all understanding. We don't even understand the depth of the covenant or his Shalom. It passed all understanding. What shall I do? When we understand this bridge of Shalom, this covenant of Shalom, uh, this allegiance that Yah has to us, we don't even think on no Shalom. We may say it, Shalom. Yah Barak. When you Baruch someone, you submit to them. Like you submit to Yah. And hell out of the same mouth flow from that fountain bitter and sweet water. It cannot be. It just cannot be. He says, he says uh, when we understand this beauty of Shalom, which passes all understanding, uh, even understanding that shall uh, jamah, shall keep, preserve, uh, what? 
your levim, your heart, and your minds through Yahshua HaMashiach. And then he said, after all that, when you understand all these things, uh, he used the word heads, uh, finally, the end result, finally, 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 my brethren, uh, he said, when you understand this beauty of the covenant, we don't understand that. He said, when you understand that, he said, finally, whatsoever things are, imats, true. You think, with truth, iman, with firmness and fidelity and faith. Whatsoever things are true. Most of the time we think it on lies and corruption. Whatsoever things are true. Listen now. Show you why we don't think of the things that are truth, that are faithfulness, that are firm and keep us firm. You understand? This is what keeps your mind, your body firm. And sit us, we keep your belly conscious and all that keep the belly firm. But this is what keeps us firm. Yeah, we're not soft. We cry like a little baby. He says, uh, and whatsoever things are honest, he uses the word clean. What is just, whatsoever thing is just, and pure, and righteous. And those things that are correct. And those things, listen, when he used the word clean, honest, uh, he's talking about the things that are verifiable in our, among us. You can look at someone and say, he, he's not honest, he's a liar. You can look at her and say, she's not honest. She's a flat out liar. Yeah. Don't, don't lie to me. It's one thing of all the years, mama, can I tell you something? I would say to the ones, uh, I was thinking today, this place will be jam packed. We had 135 people living here, just living here. Look at that. And all these don't even live here. And I would say to the young men when they would bring them to me or situation, I would never ask them if they did it. Never. I will constantly remind them of this. First of all, don't lie to me. Don't. Don't lie to me. And I would, this man knows, I would talk like that for an hour. And I said, I want you to tell me the truth what happened. Never once did they lie to me. I don't care who it was. They will always tell me the truth. Hold up, don't, don't tell me. And I will tell them scenarios and situations and, and the result and the consequences of lies. I just don't know. Look, look. So if you lie to me, I'm going to have your father to break the rod on your ass. Just don't lie to me. When they tell me to, I say, Daddy, you talk to him now. Next time, he's going to put the rod on you. Just don't lie to me. Because I hadn't lied to them. So don't lie to me. Don't do that. Y'all hate every liar. A liar hates everyone that is afflicted by their lies. He hates. Well, I don't believe that. Well, who's the liar from the beginning? Was it not Hashatan? Why? Because he did not train his mind to dwell in truth, right? Because he did not dwell in truth. So when one lies and one practice lies, you're dealing with a formidable demonic force. And you better kick that head in. I'll kick it in. I will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, and whatsoever thing is just, whatever is sadiq, sadiq, whatever things represent the character of Yah. He also talks about whatsoever things are tahor, whatsoever things are tav, whatsoever things are pure. Now these are the things he says. And he says, whatsoever things are lovely. Don't you want to just be lovely to someone? What's wrong with that? We don't know how to be lovely. We don't know how to have. We don't think of the things that are lovely. His Torah is lovely and beautiful, isn't it? We don't, come on, Yisrael. Don't give me that bull, Justin. We don't think on that. We don't think on that. Our minds mourn food and things like that. But that has become our gods, our bellies. It is our gods. So what's everything is lovely? To be lovely and kind to you? Would you be lovely and kind to me? Would you be lovely to Yisraya? Be kind. He said those things. He said, what's everything is lovely? Achab. Achava. Yah is love, isn't it? So what's everything please him? It pleases Yah to me for me to be affectionate with him. 
and he with me. You have to be honest. If they talk to each other honest, it doesn't mean that I say, man, get up, let's get some work done. Got to get busy, man. But as I talk, shut up. Because I will never let him outwork me. No man. Period. He may do as much or more than me, but he won't outwork me. Why do you do that? Not because I'm trying to show my superior, superior ability. Because if he works that hard, I'm not going to shortchange him. You understand? That's why I'm going to work that hard. Hallelujah. He said, what's everything is lovely? What's everything is of tough report? Most of the time we report each other just lie. It's folly, isn't it? It's folly. I love your daughters, especially among you. What's everything is of tough report? Among your daughters, you can say, what you want among the bads of Yisraya? What's everything is a tough report? Now, this is the catalyst. This is what changed the whole dynamics of everything. He says, listen, you can only think on these things if there be any virtue, if there be any chayil, chayil, any strength, any character, a strong mind, if there be any chayil, if there be any virtue, see? And if there be any praise, any yada, we don't have no yada. We don't confess our faults, our sins. We are arrogant. We're full of pride. We think we possess something and you're dirty and we stink. And you're going to die that way. The way you are right now, you're going to die that way. You're in lust. You're going to die that way. You're sinful. You're going to die that way. He said, if there be any praise, any yada, any confession. That's what praising is. It's a confession. Oh, yeah, there was no sorry. Oh, forgive me. Oh, please. <laughs> it's an arrogant generation. You're not going to tell me nothing. I know. I will come on. If there be any chayil, any strength of knowledge in you, see, you will think on these things. And when you think on those things like that, then there will be a praise. Then if there be any yada, any confession in you, any. You see, you would think on those things. That's why you don't think on those things. You think because you talk a game that you're right, that doesn't make you right with y'all. You got to live this, man. You got to love him like he said. You got to love Yisrael. God doesn't give a damn about what daddy really wants to strengthen the enemy of his son. You think he's going to strengthen this heathen world, this nation? And that the enemies of his son, we are crazy. We don't have nothing. We're just as ignorant as we look. In order for you to become a scholar with scholarship, you've got to train your mind to adhere to disciplines, to read, to study. You've got to do that. I learn everything by being quiet and just watching men. That's how I learn. All my life, I've learned that way. I've learned that way just by being quiet and watching other men. That's how I've learned. Just shutting my mouth, not any input, and just watching, man. I've learned how to build. I can build a house. I can plumb it. I can do anything. I've learned that just by watching. And not, well, I, I, I got it. No, I don't have it. Show me. Okay. Ah. I see that. I can do it now. I would have finished up. Hallelujah. So if there be virtue in us, if these things be in us, uh, he says, uh, he said, think on these things. That's what we must, we have, must train our minds that way. He says in verse 9, those things which you have both, listen now, you have learned, you have lamads, you have perceived from your hearing that this is the purpose of Yah. We must learn. We must learn. You don't know how to jog. You can't go out there and just jog. You have to learn. I remember as a young lad, I would go to the public swimming pool. Uh, and I was so infatuated with the swimmers uh, and the divers. Uh, and back then, I'm telling you, swans. Uh, and one and a half, two and a half, I mean, double oaks. Were, it, it, was a, it, was a, it, it was an oasis of tremendous activities, especially Saturday and Sunday. Everybody was swimming that could swim. I remember sneaking to the pool, to the pool that day, Mama. 
And I was just infatuated with the swimmers and the, and the uh, symmetrics and, and the symmetry as the water just disturbed it when they would swim. And as a young boy, I would watch. I would go to the pool just to watch. And I would watch. I would watch the feet. I would watch their hands, the buoyancy of their body. I would watch it for days. I would sit there for hours and just watch swimmers and divers. And I lied to you, not the first day I got in the water. I could swim in the deepest. No one had to teach me. Just watching. Just watching. That's how you learn. Mark, a perfect man. For the head of that man is Shalom. You mark that man. You mark a tough man. The steps of a tough man, a righteous man, they're ordered. Not every step is ordered by Yah. Hallelujah. Those things which you have both learned and you have received, and you have received them in your love, you have loved, and seen what he said in me. Did they learn them from him? He said, have you seen the power of this truth where? Does it say in me? Does it say in me, Zachim, in me? In me. He reminds us all the time because you're wicked. That doesn't mean someone else is wicked like you. Shaul said, have you seen that in me? You've seen my character. You've seen the man that I am. You've seen how I love. You've seen my virtue, my strength. You've seen that in me. He says, Asa, do fashion yourself like me. Walk like me, talk like me, act like me. He says, Asa, fashion your mind, do. Why would I do that? He says, when you do that, and the Abba, Ya of Shalom, shall be with you. Now, that's a statement. That's a statement. This is a warning to us all here. I want to read this from the book of Hanak. It's a warning to God's people. Hanak Enoch chapter 98, verse 7. I want you to hear this. We don't have time to be playing around. Hanak chapter 98, verse 7. And y'all use the word hashab here in this. He says, think. Think not in your ruach, in your living being. Hanak 98, 7. He says, hashab. Don't even plan don't esteem, don't calculate. Uh, he says, in your ruach, neither say in your love, in your heart, that you neither know nor see all uh, our sins uh, being written down every day in the presence of Yahweh the Most. I don't think in your heart that your sins are not written down. Don't think that your lies and your corruption, uh, and we, have a, we train our minds, well, uh, I, I'm a nice person. You're not nice. You're not loving, you're not kind, you're not lovely. That's a fact. So don't think, don't think that your sins are not being written down. Why, why you say that, Yaz? Zakane Benjamin would say, from now on, do know, I want you to know tonight, that all your injustice, your evil, your evil ways, your inconsiderate ways, which you have committed unjustly, You've done wrong by the nation. The people are unjustly. Are written down every day until the day of Mishpat. Everything I do to these people is one thing I learned as a young preacher. Probably 24, 25 years old. Do the people right. But that doesn't mean I won't rebuke. I'm not going to let any man, any woman destroy nothing of you. That doesn't mean that. He says everything you've done is written down. And we don't even think, we don't even fear Yah. We can sin with such prominency before him. It doesn't even bother us. Nobody sees me, but Yah sees you. Yah sees you. And the Melach is right now in everything. You can allow you want to to your wicked heart. You say, right, Yah, don't think this way. See, we have trained our minds to think that way. It's like a thief when he's stealing, he thinks nobody sees him. And they got the camera and say, well, look, at that. he's a bull praiser thing, isn't he? Stole it right in front of my eyes. So we don't think that Yah's writing it down. Because we've trained ourselves to lie to ourselves and make us believe our lies. We must train ourselves as warriors. Like a Uriah. He denied himself. When that we knew what he had done. Got him drunk. He said, but I love you, king. 
I love you more than I love that woman. And she is so pretty. If I go in there and see her beautiful eyes, it'll make me betray you. And I can't do that. I can't do that. I won't sell you out for nothing. I give nobody stand with me. Shaul said, when I came upon you, among you, there was no man that stood with me. I have wife. I have no children. So children, sons, and daughters. I don't care. I mean this. That's why I say, y'all don't know me. All these years of y'all have never really learned me. Hallelujah. Hear this, Yisrael, in the mind. This is how the heathen's mind think in Ezra, fourth Ezra. This is how the heathen, that's why you, this is how you know you are heathen. In the fourth writing of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 32. 32. Or is there any other nation that knows Almighty Yahweh beside Yisrael? There's no other nation. That Yahweh experienced the beauty of Yah. Nobody knows him but his Yisrael. Or what tribe has so believed your Brit, your covenant uh, as a tribe of Yahudah? What people, what nation that trusts in your covenant, your promises? Uh, do we trust in the promises of Yah? We don't even, his promises is Dabarim, his word. We don't even trust that. Then he goes on to say, and yet, in this nations, and yet the reward has not appeared in their labor, has produced no fruit. When one thinks, and one trains their mind to think, you can see the fruit, you can see the beauty. When you see a smart man, and I was thinking the day I said, to, if I ask us a question, those that are listening, most people, what is the divisiveness or what is the division of one? How many times can you divide one? show you. You can divide, divide one by point zero one, point zero zero one, point zero 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 one, point zero 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 one, point zero 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 one, point zero 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 zero. You can go on and on. Everything that Yad does is it has an infinity. It never ends. I like that. I like that. And I'm, I'm not a mathematician. She's great in math. My wife, she does. But I want to refresh on algebra and things like that. She teaches. She teaches me. She shows me how dumb I am. So she said, she teaches me. Yeah, she teaches me. Hallelujah. I remember I wanted to show up when the school was full. I said, my fear, just help me out. So the, kid, the young folks said, they loved it. Ray, please, why don't you become a teacher? I'm a teacher. Watch me in the cornfield out there. And watch me plant okra. And watch me harvest those bees. I, that, that's what I'm doing, teaching. I am teaching you. Oh, please be our teacher. No, 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 no. Hear this. There's no fruit. For I have gone here and there through the heathens, the Goim. And I see that they abound in wealth. They got money. I was talking about the Waltons today and the woman, the wicked woman defended them. But the writer says, and think. They are the one that has shab. They, 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 they think not. See, that's what a heathen does. Doesn't even consider does it say it thinks not upon the mitzvah, the commands of Yah? And he then never. Come on now. If we are true believers of Yah, we would think on the commandments. See, he then doesn't think on the commandments of Yah. Our minds don't even consider that. We, we are heathens. Oh, Mishrahel. What nation knows Yah like his nation? And what people have been more honest with him than Yahobah? Yehuda and Benjamin. He said, I've gone and seen all the wealth of all the heathens, uh, and they don't even think of the mitzvah, the commandments of Yah. We don't think on them. They don't even think, come on now, ask yourself that. How often you think of the commands of the beauty of Yah and Yahshua? We don't have time for that. We've got time for lies and folly. No time for Yah. As I came with, I'm not going to finish this. I want to read two more places and I'm going to close. I'm glad I didn't bring as many scriptures as I've had. Hallelujah. This is Shalomo's wisdom and I want to close from Tehillim. Shalomo says in the wisdom of Shalomo, wisdom one in one, he commands us to love righteousness or a chava sadiq. Because his wisdom tells us how we should think of Yah. 
And what kind of ruach we must have to think of God? He says, a chava, righteousness of Sadiq. He said, you that be the shoftim of the judges of the earth. Uh, he says, I want you to shefa. I want you to think. I want you to be fair. I want it to seem as though I want it to be known that you're fair, you're righteous, uh, and you think in a way that is tough, that is fair and honest. Uh, he says, think of Yah. We think of Almighty Yahweh how? with an honest love. We must be honest with ourselves, uh, with an honest love. How? In sincerity. In sincerity of love, seek him. For he will be found of them that tempt him not. And show himself to such as do not distrust him. He makes himself known. When we distrust Yah, he's not going to make himself known unto us. He's not going to, because that's, uh, read on down in wisdom 1 down to 7. I'm not going to read that. Uh, I want you to read that. I want to close it from Tehillim, Psalms 119, verse 59. I want to begin here. And that reads uh, the greatness of his love, his tenderness toward Yah. And this is what he is expressing unto us. We don't want to try to do anything to bypass Yah's truth, his Torah. So he says this in Psalms 119, 159. He used the word ashith, ashith. You see that sheath, eith, it always has to do with the beginning of something, really, in the Arabic or the Hebraic language. It says, uh, I thought, ashith, my thoughts, my plans. He said, I thought on my ways. I thought on my ways. Now, you must think on your ways. You must ashith. He said, when I thought about my ways, uh, he said, I thought of my ways and I turned my feet uh, to your testimony. I knew I'm, I know I'm not right. When I thought about my ways, we need to think about our ways. He said, turn my feet to your testimony, your Adam. He said, I made whoosh. I made haste. I was eager with excitement. I made haste. And I delayed not to what? Shema keep your mitzvah. He said the heathens don't even think about his mitzvah. When you got a heathen mind, you don't think about the commandments of Yah. He said the bands of the wicked have robbed me. They have robbed me. Hasn't the wicked robbed you? He said, but I have not forgotten your Torah. That's all right. He said the wicked have what? My own Risha. There's not somebody out there wicked robbing you. It's the bands of your own wickedness, your lies, your corruption, your folly, your foolishness. That's what's robbing us. He said, but I did not forget your Torah. And the riches of Yah rest upon his nation, his people, you that have joined us, the live broadcast, we greet you all. Your sure is mighty name, my friends. Our enemies, we like you. I do. You keep me fit and in shape. Keep my heart right with Yah. Hallelujah. You better stand to our feet. Hallelujah. We turn toward Yerushalayim. In all things we do, Barakhiu, Ar Abba, we told you for this day in all things. Take the Zachain down the road with the Imahim home safely. Bless your people. Give us all rest the night. Bless Yisraya, those that join us. We pray your blessings upon them all. Yoshua's mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Yabrak Yisraya.